Hello and welcome to another edition of Beginner's Guitar Blog. My name's Simon Revel and today we're going to be talking about pre-bends. Okay, and as usual, if you check the description below, you'll find a link to download all the media, including the tablature, guitar profiles, and the musical backing tracks, as well as the recorded track. Okay, to play along with this lesson. But first, before we dive into all of that, we're going to have a look at some diagrams again. And just going to talk about the pre-band and how it's different from a normal band. Okay, so as you can see in this diagram, we've got the description at the top, pre-band, and it says, bend the note as indicated, then strike it. So the difference between the kind of bend we're going to do today and a regular bend is that we bend the string before we pick it with the plectrum. So uh, looking at the diagram on the tab part, not the musical staff above, um, you can see that it's indicating that we want to fret the note on fret 9 of the G string and then we've got an arrow that goes straight up and this means to pre-bend where we bend the string and then we strike it. If I just take a quick look at another diagram which is the half step bend, it says strike the note and bend up half a step. The half step a bit, you don't need to worry about that so much but it, notice how it says strike the note and then it says and bend up. And if you have a look at the arrow, it's slightly different. It's more of a, a curve from fret 9 going upwards towards the right. So this is a normal bend. So going back to our pre-bend diagram, you can see the difference. So whenever you see one of these arrows in any kind of tab or guitar books or, or any anything you have a look at songs, what you want to play or, or something like that, you'll always see the up arrow going straight up means a pre-bend, which means if you got that wrong, you know, and you thought it was a normal band, it won't sound exactly like the band that you can uh, hear on the record that you're trying to play. So that's why it's really important to study this. Okay, so let's dive into some of these exercises. The first note that I want you to play is on the B string at the fifth fret, okay? And I want you to put your first finger on that. So that's the second string and the first finger going on the fifth fret of the B string. Okay, and I just want you to give that a play. Okay? Now, what I want you to do is put your second finger, keeping the first finger where it is, I want you to put that on the sixth fret, okay? And I want you to play the string now. Okay, the aim of the game here is that we want the first finger to play the note as we bend it and make it sound like the one on the sixth fret. So I'll just quickly demonstrate what a pre-bend is. There's the note we want, here's the bend, and then we strike the string as we discussed earlier. So I think you'd agree that they, both those notes are pretty much identical. Okay, so just have a go at that. You know, rewind if you want to see that technique again, and you know, have a go at yourself. One thing I'm going to warn you of first, okay, is that you might get a bit of this. You'll play this note here at the sixth fret. You'll try the pre-bend, and it won't be high enough. Okay, but and you know, another thing that might happen is you'll play the one at the sixth fret. You'll do the pre-bend, and it'll be a bit too high. And these are, you know, very common occurrences in beginners. And I just want to reassure you, that this is absolutely normal. It's going to take some time before you can judge the exact amount of how much you've got to bend um, to make sure it's perfect. It's going to take time for you to to get used to that. Okay, it's a bit like riding a bike. Okay, you're going to need the stabilizers on for a while, right? And then eventually you're going to take them off and just go for it, and it's going to work. Okay, it's just going to take a little bit of practice, but it doesn't take long as long as you persevere it. So for the rest of the notes, we've got three more notes I want you to do. There's that one there. Okay, and there's one here on the G string, and we're going to be on the fourth fret of the G string, the third string, with our first finger again, and it's just the same. We want to get the note right next to it on the next fret, so we use the second finger. Do the pre-bend. As you could hear, I went a little bit high there. It still happens to me sometimes, okay? And it will happen to you, but you know, don't worry, persevere, you'll get this. Okay, and the next one, we're on the seventh fret of the B of the E string, excuse me, E string. Okay, and we want to get the note at the eighth fret. So we'll play that one again with the second finger. And we'll bend up with the first finger, trying to guess how far to bend. We'll double check that. 
that's pretty much spot on. And the next note is on the B string, and it's at the same fret, the seventh fret. So we'll, we'll go to the one at the eighth fret with the second finger to check what we want to try and note we want to try and achieve. And that's it, they're just the four notes that I want you to have a go at, okay? And when you've had a go at doing that, you should aim to try and get it a bit like this. Okay, so let's talk about this week's exercise. All right, so you can see this diagram that's coming up on the screen now. We've got two bars of D minor, followed by two bars of A minor, followed by two bars of C, and finally two bars of G. Now the chords aren't really relevant in this exercise at all. They're just part of the backing track that I've provided. What's important though, is that you hit each of these pre-bent notes on time for each chord. So on the D minor, we wanna have the one at the fifth fret on the B string, and we're gonna be bending up towards the sixth fret note, so like this. And then for the A minor, we're gonna want the one on the G string, which was at the fourth fret going up to the fifth fret, so like this. And then on the um, C major chord, we want the uh, note that's on the E string at the seventh fret, like going up to the eighth fret note. And finally, on the G chord, we want to hit the note that's on the seventh fret of the B string, like this. And we're going to bend up towards the note that's going to be on the eighth fret. So here we go. Okay, so I'm now going to demonstrate that for you. And uh, this is what you've got to play this week. So enjoy, and I hope it doesn't look too intimidating. Okay, hopefully I didn't look too hard. What I'm gonna show you now is the other exercise I've included in the pack, which is the pre-bands with the first finger, but with vibrato. So what we need to discuss is how to do vibrato, okay? It's not a hard technique, it's just important to keep trying with it. Um, it's the same exercise we've just done, but as we said, we had two bars per chord, and in the second bar this time, as you're still holding the note, you're going to do a bit of vibrato. So we do the pre-bend, we strike the note, and then we release the finger a little bit and then bring it back up. I'm just gonna do that again because that wasn't very clear. Now I've done that very slowly, but as you get a hang of that, you just keep going down a little bit and back up a little bit. You know, you'll get the vibrato effect that's very slow, but as you get used to it, you'll be able to do it faster like this. I'll show you on the other notes that we've been doing. Okay, and that'll be a nice little bit of expression for your guitar soloing. So uh, here's the exercise now, and I'll show you that with the backing track again. Okay, so one more thing I need to tell you is, if you have a look at my hand again, you'll see that my fingers are kind of out of the way. They're not obstructing the view of this finger. And the reason why I, it's like that is because I've tried not to do that, uh, put them in the way of the first finger so that you can see what I'm doing. Now, when you try this, I want you to know that your fingers can be like this. As you can see, they're higher up now. They're resting, that's more comfortable. The only reason I did it, again, is just so that you could see it. So what your fingers should look like throughout the exercise is like this. OK, 
okay and that's totally normal so I just wanted to clear that up because you probably thought it looked a bit strange okay so I hope you've enjoyed this exercise today uh, please download the pack the links to the uh, downloadable pack is in the description so check that out and we'll be back next week with some more exercises I think we'll probably do some slides next week we'll see what happens enjoy bye bye